Right, today I want to talk about um, long sightedness. And what I want to talk about is there's a lot of myths surrounding this condition. Um, so I want to go through what those myths are. Um, if you want to find out more about what long sightedness and short sightedness and how the eye actually works and that sort of stuff, um, best thing to do is Google um, or there's probably plenty of other good videos um, on YouTube which you know explain that a lot more adequately but today I'm going to talk about the myths surrounding long sightedness. Okay, the first myth, if you are long sighted, things are blurry close up. Um, very often this isn't true, especially for younger people who are long sighted. And I want to mention at this point, I am talking about long sightedness as, or hyperopia, as distinct from presbyopia. Um, which comes on in middle age or late later life. Okay. Um, right, the reason things are very often not blurry close up um, is because most people with long sightedness or most people can accommodate, use their muscles to see things close up, you use a lot of muscle to try and fatten the eyeball out and that, that's what enables you to see up close. Um, you use, use some of the same muscles to see far away but not hardly that many. So you know if you're a bit short sighted you know you can squint and strain as much as you like but how far you can see is generally how far you can see. Um, to see up close, it's more important to be able to see up close really. Um, you can make a lot of effort to do that, especially as a kid. And the, the kid who is long sighted, who is sitting next to the kid who isn't, is just making a lot more effort um, to see what he's reading. I mean, the only long-sighted people for whom things are blurry is the people who've been picked up and have been wearing glasses for a very long time since early childhood, um, which stops that accom accommodative process in its tracks because it really is over-accommodation. And people with presbyopia in later life and that's because the eye is starting to harden a bit and isn't quite so flexible. Okay, myth number two. Long-sighted people have amazing distance vision. Um, this is a really, really big myth. Um, I mean certainly the case with with kids because their eyes are flexible. Um, they can see for miles and miles and in adulthood um, probably not you know, young adults probably not too much of a problem, but if you've got enough that your eyes are constantly being strained um, and you're over-focusing a lot on um, what's close up, and to you it may seem perfectly normal because it's what you've done all your life, um, what happens then is, because of the muscles fattening the eyeball out, um, the eyes sort of get stuck that way. The same as if you've done a, a big workout at the gym and you're stiff and you can't move for a bit. It's exactly the same, so the eyes are stuck like that. And if you want to see the distance, because the muscles are all like pumped up as it were, you can't. You, the eyes not flexible enough at that point. Um, and for people who are doing this on a regular basis, they turn up at the optician, it can actually even look like they're short-sighted. Um, and certainly for very long-sighted people, um, 
they need glasses magnifiers, which for most people would make everything look blurry. Um, they need those to actually see distance better. Um, okay, myth number three. When you are long sighted, you hold f things further away to look at them. Okay, this is how it is if you're holding something this far away to read it. Try, try doing that. Um, see how long you can keep it up. Because um, your shoulders hurt, your neck hurts. <laughs> um, it's basically impractical. So what a lot of people do while, while you can still accommodate, because remember a lot of long-sighted people are used to over-accommodating anyway, is you actually pull things closer. And it's kind of like a crude way of magnifying, which is ultimately the correction that you need um, as someone who is long-sighted. Um, and similarly, um, you know, you will sometimes step forward to actually see things because small details are a bit of a problem um, as well. Okay, myth number four. Um, sort of two myths in one. Long-sighted people get diagnosed as children and this goes along with the idea that long-sightedness is a severe and rare condition. Um, I know of the people who I know who've been diagnosed long-sighted, I can count on the fingers of one hand. Um, they were all picked up as kids, they needed eye patches, operations, what have you, um, and they are all extremely long-sighted. But in reality, um, this condition is exactly the same as short-sightedness, um, in that some people are very short-sighted, some people are quite a bit short-sighted and some people are a little bit short-sighted. Long-sightedness, exactly the same, um, but because of the, the eye being able to accommodate, it just doesn't get picked up as easily um, as short-sightedness would. Um, okay, myth number five. As children, um, long-sighted people don't like reading or close focus tasks. Um, now it's certainly true that there, there will be some sort of um, problems, but because as you know kids can over accommodate much more than an adult can, they're used to it, um, yet yeah, Met some sometimes they don't like reading um, or close focus things, but that is certainly not always true. Some of them will like things like reading and sewing. Um, what there might be is difficulties actually writing or if they're doing something that's a close focus task, um, they will get so engrossed. Um, it's very difficult for them to actually break their attention and move to another task. Um, okay, so myth number six. Um, if you are diagnosed long-sightedness as an adult, it's not likely to be that much and you don't really need glasses. Um, Right. Um, if you are lucky enough to be diagnosed long-sighted as an adult, um, because op opticians hold the view that um, if you are long-sighted, it, it must be severe, and it must have been picked up as a, as a child. Um, many, many adults go through life sometimes not knowing they've got this condition, and sometimes they turn up with eye strain and they're told that it's <coughs> something like convergence insufficiency um, or tired eyes 
or dry eyes um, or, some, or something like that. Um, uh, do you need glasses? Um, obviously, if you're sort of nearer the three diopter mark, um, you're going to be a lot more comfortable with them on. Um, certainly, because we need to read and write a lot more these days, um, close visual acuity was is more important than it, than it ever was. I mean, little kids are using the computer. The computer is a daily part of our life. Um, yes, you absolutely do need glasses, even if just for reading comfortably. And sometimes it's better to actually wear them all all the time. Depend, you know, depending on what what you're comfortable with. Um, and for anything up to two diopters, certainly anything you can pick up from the chemist or, you know, um, reading glasses you can get from any shop. Those would be perfectly fine for that purpose. Okay, myth number um, seven, or myth number, yeah, myth number seven. Um, an eye test will show if you are long-sighted. Um, right, no it doesn't. The standard eye test um, where you read the Sne Snellen chart, which is where you look at the letters on the wall over there somewhere, um, that is not how you diagnose long-sightedness. Um, you need to assess how someone is doing things at close range for starters. Um, there are two tests which will diagnose long-sightedness properly. Uh, one is the push-fogging test. That's where they test your vision. Um, now they get you to read the letters through magnifiers or reading glasses, which normally make everything go blurry. Um, and if your distance is the same or better through them, then you are long-sighted. Um, However, that test can be really compromised, you know, if you've been used to over-accommodating, um, then it can, that test can actually not work. You need to, if you're going to do that test, you need to make sure your eyes are thoroughly relaxed for a good two weeks before you go to the optician, otherwise it would just look like you're normally sighted got a bit of eye strain or even that you're short-sighted. Um, the other test which um, is a much more thorough test is the cycloplegic test. That's where they put drops in your eyes. It relaxes the eyes thoroughly um, and it gives a much um, more accurate diagnosis. Um, very opt often opticians Will say oh we only do that test on children but to be honest if you feel it's necessary um, and it applies to you you're paying them the money go and ask for that test um, okay that's all the myths about long-sightedness um, thank you for watching this